I don't know why that video just cut off, but we're going to have to cope with it. So I got to the point where I set up a sub n plus one over a sub n. And what I was about to say before I was rudely interrupted by my computer is that we want the interval of convergence. And if I want something to converge, that means I need this limit to be less than one. So I'm going to make it less than one and solve for x so that works out. So the ratio test basically says, take your series a sub n plus one, divide by a sub n, set it less than one, and then solve for x. So that's what we're going to do. Now, these are two nasty fractions. So it's a lot easier if I think of this division as a product. So this is really n plus two x to the n plus one over three to the n plus two times the reciprocal of the bottom, which would be three to the n plus one divided by x to the n n plus 1. And then I set that less than 1. And now I get to cancel. I love canceling. So here's x to the n. Here's x to the n plus 1. So these cancel and just leave an x to the first behind. Here's 3 to the n plus 1. Here's 3 to the n plus 2. So I can cancel this and really just leave 3 behind. So what I have now is the limit as n approaches infinity of, let's see, n plus 2 times x over 3 times n plus 1. And now I'm going to do something really sneaky. I'm going to say, you know what? I have the limit as n approaches infinity, which means everything else is just considered a coefficient. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to rewrite this and take out the things that aren't n's x over 3 can come out in front. And then I'm still taking the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 2 over n plus 1. Now I'm going to look at this limit. As n approaches infinity, n plus 2 over n plus 1 does go to infinity over infinity, but it's the spit in the ocean rule. The top and the bottom have the same degree, so this really just goes to 1. So I'm left with x over 3 in an absolute value is less than 1, which then becomes x over 3 is between 1 and negative 1, because if the absolute value of x plus 3 is less than positive 1, that means regular x plus 3 is between 1 and negative 1. Solve for x by multiplying everybody by 3, and this is now your interval of convergence. But I got to put an asterisk, kind of like those, you know, ads where they put an asterisk. Um, the asterisk is kind of. That's to be continued. All right. So we're close to the interval of convergence, but I can't explain the whole thing now because we don't have that kind of time. But that's part of the interval of convergence. What we can definitively talk about, though, is the radius of convergence. And the radius of convergence is half the width of the interval. So this interval goes from negative 3 to 3, which means it's 6 wide. So our radius of convergence is 3. That's true. That doesn't need an asterisk. Okay. So what that's telling me is that if I were to write out this series, and you don't have to write it out, but if I were to write out this series, um, let's see, when n equals 0, that's going to be 1 third x to the 0. If n equals 1, that's going to be 2 ninths x. If n equals 2, that's going to be 3 27ths x squared. That series, whatever it mimics, it mimics the other thing on the window from negative 3 to 3. Okay? All right, I am going to stop talking now because two videos is enough. So I hope you guys had a good day. I will see you soon. And yeah, I don't even have a joke because I'm super distracted today. So enjoy the rest of your day, morning, evening, whatever. And we'll talk later. Bye.